Hello there, YouTube. This is Necrostevo, and it's time for the Week 8 Team Builder of the Pokemon Premier League Division 1, Season 4. This time, the Eterna City Enders excuse me, are going up against West Chan United, who are coached by Liam. But as uh, some of you know, he has an extenuating circumstance, so we're going to have a stand-in coach for him for our battle. So, um... Yeah, let's look at this matchup. Just a really quick team rundown. Uh, they, we had a week off from the Pokemon Premier League, so I had plenty of time to prepare for this one, which was nice. Because, as you see, we have a new member on our squad. I actually dropped Rotom cut form for Ferrothorn during the break. Uh, just for the remaining matchups, I really didn't find that Rotom cut had what I wanted for the last few matchups. And while Ferrothorn does kind of exacerbate our fighting type and fire type weaknesses, I feel like we have more than enough team synergy here to deal with those uh, particular weaknesses. So for this matchup, uh, Liam has Infernape, Mamoswine, Whimsicott, Blastoise, Licky Licky, Here in Black, Drapion, Yuxi, Golem, Mega Aerodactyl, and Krokorok. Man, talk about speed here for this team here over just like the average speed of his Pokemon is far and above higher than most average speed teams and I he, like he used to have Scallopede so I'm happy I don't have to deal with that uh, in this particular matchup here and what we do have to deal with unfortunately is the presence of I'm very very certain that Infernape, uh, Mamoswine, Kirin Black, and Mega Aerodactyl are all coming to this battle. I could also see Yuxi and uh, even the Drapion coming to a lesser extent, I can see both of them coming too. Uh, but for our purposes, the, the way to win this battle is really relying, I only have one main win condition and the rest is really just there to whittle things down. Uh, Ferrothorn forms a nice Firewater Grass Core here with Blastoise and Volcarona. You see I have a little bit of a weird investment there on his defense and special defense. That defensive investment is to make sure that I always live uh, for example, two adamant life orb earthquakes from Mammal Swine, for example. I can always live those with that defensive investment in a relaxed nature. I put the rest in the special defense with max HP in order to make sure I can live a hidden power of fire, possibly two from Kirin Black, depending on his investment. That also allows me to live an errant hidden power of fire from the likes of Whimsicott, too, because Ferrothorn is our go to switch into Whimsicott. Uh, Gyro Ball and Power Whip allow me to not be set up fodder. I can hit the Whimsicott, I can hit Kieran Black, Power Whip bops the Blastoise and the Mammal Swine, which is really, really nice. Um, I don't have specific coverage against Infernape, but I don't see Infernape switching into Ferrothorn anyway because there's the possibility that I could go for Thunder Wave. So, uh, yeah, I really like this set for this battle. I have Stealth Rock and Spikes on Ferrothorn just because his whole team gets whittled down very easily and very quickly by entry hazards. He also has a lot of grounded Pokemon with only uh, two Pokemon not being grounded, the Yuxi with Levitate and Mega Aerodactyl. So even one layer of spikes will be very annoying for him. And if I can pressure Blastoise into spinning, or if he for some reason brings um, Defog and Mega Aerodactyl, I don't see that happening. But any turn where I can force him to do that is excellent. Now our next Pokemon is going to actually be the Weavile. And Weavile here has Ice Shard, Icicle Crash, Knock Off, and Pursuit. I just went ahead and went Max Speed, Max Attack here with a Life Orb because I don't, I can't outspeed the Mega Aerodactyl, but I do need all the extra speed to outspeed a possible, um, like any type of Drapion set. All the extra speed is great for um, a variety of Yuxi or Infernape type sets. And Infernape is probably going to have Mach Punch anyway. I was tempted to toy around with um, some type of adamant type set to get more um, power. But then there's a chance he could speed creep, those types of things. And so I wanted to be relatively certain that, okay, if he's not scarfed, I outspeed it. Now I do have a uh, knockoff and pursuit here. Knockoff is highly spammable against his whole team. And then once things get whittled down, then we start going for um, ice shards for the most part. I do like the situation where I can pursuit trap Yuxi because I do think Yuxi is coming. Um, on the off chance that Yuxi brings status, such as Yon or Thunder Wave, I do have a status uh, healer, which is Gardevoir's Heal Bell. Um, 
I did forego going with low kick here because I'm not very worried about Mano Swine since I have Primate, a Choice Guard Primate rather. Uh, and so I'd rather have the ability to trap things in with Pursuit. And if I bring Weavile in to certain Pokemon, such as say he has a Mano Swine or a Drapion, um, then just being able to spam knockoff is really all I need for this battle anyways. Uh, Pursuit trapping Yuxi is just really a fringe benefit here. Um, ice Shard does a very, very nice amount of damage to anything on his team weak to Ice. So the, um, that's going to be his Whimsicott, the Mega Aerodactyl, and the Golem. They don't like taking Ice Shard, which is why I don't think we'll necessarily see Whimsicott here, especially because of Ferrothorn. But I would rather have that in the bag just in case I need it. That way we don't run into a situation like with Liam's team he had, I think, a couple weeks ago, where he basically just Encore subseeded his whole entire opponent's team to death. I don't want to be in that position uh, should I lose Ferrothorn for some reason. Now our next Pokemon is going to be Blastoise forming a nice, uh, this is a very bulky offensive Blastoise. Um, 228 in HP, 140 in special attack, 140 in speed. That speed is there just in case I need Blastoise to um, outspeed a non-invested Yuxi. Um, the speed also catches random things like Licky Licky uh, if he happens to be an odd set on Golem trying to take advantage of Rock Polish weakness policy, something like that. Blastoise catches all those. Now I went with Scald, Ice Beam, Orchard, and Rapid Spin here just because those three moves cover his entire team. Uh, Scald is highly spammable against his entire team, barring... I guess his own Blastoise, which I don't see coming. I do have to be careful if he does bring Blastoise, so watch out for Miracle, because that would be annoying. Uh, really, the only thing that can come in easily is Yuxi, and I have plenty of other things for Yuxi, so I'm not as worried about it. The special attack EVs that are there ensures the two-hit KO against a very bulky Licky Licky with Aura Sphere, which is nice because that helps me pick up extra damage just all around. Uh, two-hit KOing Whimsicott with Ice Beam, um, having a great chance to one-hit KO, Mamo Swine with Scald. Uh, it's it's kind of a catch-all spread there by going with Modest, but I didn't want to put too much speed into Blastoise because the HP is really, really important here. With that HP investment, he can even live a uh, hit from Life Orb, Cure and Black going for like a Fusion Bolt. So um, that's really a last-ditch effort there. I don't want Blastoise taking that hit, but if he has to, that is a possibility. Furthermore, with Blastoise, that's going to be my lead here, because if he leads with Mammal Swine, that'll deter him from trying to get up rocks. I get a free uh, Scald off. If he leads with Infernape, I can see what kind of Infernape it is. There's no single move that Infernape can go for that will one-hit KO me with my HP investment. So with that, I get a free Scald off and KO him, barring a Focus Sash. And if he leads with his um, Drapion or Yuxi, I can rapid spin away their entry hazards if they set them up. Uh, neither of them really want to take Scalds either. Yuxi doesn't like being burned, even though I can heal up the status. Uh, so I really like Blastoise as a lead all around. It'll be nice to figure out what his sets are early on. Particularly Infernape's four moves are going to be very important because Infernape is a problem for my team. And he can run a huge plethora of moves. It will be up to Blastoise really to suss out what his coverage is. For example, if he has Grass Knot, we know he doesn't have Thunder Punch because he might have been trying to hit Rhyperior. If he has Thunder Punch, don't have to worry about Grass Knot. Um, if he has Thunder Punch, I highly would doubt that he'd be mixed in that case, so I can then assume Mock Punch and Flare Blitz Close Combat, something like that. Uh, Inferno does get support moves as well, so I kind of have to need to take a, keep an eye out for those. But really, I'm expecting him to have Close Combat, Flare Blitz, U-Turn, and then some type of way to hit Blastoise or Rhyperior, whether it be Thunder Punch or Grass Knot. Uh, I could see that type of moveset coming. Now our main win condition this battle is going to be Volcarona. Uh, the speed is just there to make sure that I edge out the Kirin Black, uh, who has a 95 base speed. So pick up just a tad bit of bulk there. Um, just helps with taking little errant hits, which is nice. Um, with max special attack, if I get up a Quiver Dance, I win. Uh, the only way he could stop me after I get up a Quiver Dance is to have like a Tailwind up from Mega Aerodactyl and do something. Um, the Lumberry is there just to take the Paralysis from either Stun Spore Mammal Swine, uh, Stun Spore Whimsicott, excuse me, or uh, Thunder Wave Yuxi. If 
Uh, I do have to be careful of not accidentally burning my Lumberry too early on something like Toxic Spikes or something like that. That would be kind of annoying. Um, here's another instance where I need to pay attention to Infernape's coverage because if he has Rock Slide on Infernape or Mammoth Swine or to a lesser extent even on if he brings a Golem or something like that, I need to be aware of that. Golem can also use Sucker Punch if he happens to bring that. So we need to make sure we maintain that level of HP. Now, on the moves for Volcarona, we went Fire Blast, Giga Drain, Psychic, and Quiver Dance because Fire Blast is, again, very spammable against this team. The power is really, really nice here because I did decide to go Timid this week um, on Volcarona's nature. For those Pokemon that can take a Fire Blast, such as Mamoswine or the uh, or Golem or Mega Aerodactyl, most of them don't care to take Giga Drain or Psychic. Psychic is there purely for Infernape. Uh, it does do a little bit more damage against Mega Aerodactyl than uh, Giga Drain does too. So that's just nice to kind of fill in that slot there, that little niche. Uh, Volcarona can very easily set up on Whimsicott. Um, it can also set up to a lesser extent on Blastoise uh, and Licky Licky. I don't think I'd try setting up on Kira and Black, Infernape, or Mamoswine, of course. For all those threats, we just need to hit them. Uh, Infernape actually would outspeed our Volcarona, so we probably will have to switch on in that situation to see if he has Rock Slide. Um, unless I already have a Quiver Dance up. I can also set up with Volcarona against the Yuxi, so if he happens to bring that, oh, I would love to, to see that situation where I can set that up. Setting up against Whimsicott is a little bit iffy because if he has Encore, I don't really want to be locked into that option. Um, but yeah, one Quiver Dance up here, and that is good game. Now, another possible lead right now, Blastoise is still my dedicated lead depending on what he has, but he does not have a single switch in for Fairy Moose. Uh, he got rid of his Scallopede. So now his poison type being Drapion, although Drapion is easily in my top three favorite Pokemon of all time, um, Drapion is not as solid as switching to Fairy types because it takes neutral damage. Uh, with Pixie Plate and that investment, I can hit most of his team very hard, which is very, very nice. Now that 92 in HP and the 44 in defense is just there, so make sure that I'm not one hit KO'd after Stealth Rocks by a hit from Mamoswine. Uh, this is actually supposed to be modest. I don't know why this says timid. It's supposed to be modest. There we go. I got a modest one, darn it. Um, but the idea here is, number one, with Mano Swine, I don't want to get into a weird speed tie situation where I'm trying to guess uh, why deal with that. Now, I do think with Mano Swine, he'll probably be running Jolly um, four attacks or either three attacks and Stealth Rocks. So in that situation, we have a really, really nice way to just blast him, which I do like. Um, having the Pixie Plate also allows me to very reliably threaten things like Licky Licky or Blast Source that might try to switch in thinking that could take a hit from a defensive Gardevoir. What's also nice is that if I trace the Whimsicott, I pick up Prankster, and so I'll have my own Prankster Thunder Wave, which I really like that against if Mega Aerodactyl gets out of hand or something like that. Uh, or if he tries to bring in Infernape, Prankster Thunder Wave. Excellent. Um, for, uh, I do have the Psy Shock there. This is a secondary way to hit, um, if he has a Blast Torch or Licky Licky, I would assume they'd be more especially defensive in this matchup, so I'll do a little bit more damage there too. But really, I'm just going to be using Moon Blast most of the time. Heal Bell is very nice in case he decides to bring Toxic Spikes and he does have several Pokemon that can use uh, Thunder Wave or Stun Spore in Whimsicott's case. On the off, off, off chance that he brings Willow Wisp and Fernape, that'll be nice to heal that up as well. Um, the 124 speed there is actually, uh, what did I have that for? Let me take a look at my notes here. That speed is just for his, uh, if he doesn't invest in speed with his Yuxi, once again, we'll be able to outspeed that. And then um, that, again, naturally picks up the, the speediness against things like Whimsicott, if he doesn't invest at all, things like that. Um, we'll be able to outspeed those options. Now, our last slot is going to be a nice little bit of glue for this team because uh, Liam's team speed is all over the place, so having Choice Scarf Primate is really nice insurance. Uh, with that invet with max speed, I wouldn't even need max speed, but max speed also use Mega Aerodactyl even after Omegas, so that's really nice. If he happens to go Choice Scarf, Kira and Black, Mamo Swine, um, then I'll outspeed those two, or at the very least speed tie with the Kira and Black. I don't see speed. Uh, Choice Scarf Kieran Black coming just because he really needs the coverage and the ability to switch up his moves. 
Uh, close combat, very spammable move against this team. I like that um, in this situation for this matchup, I have three moves that if nothing else, I don't have to think about it too much. I can just click close combat. I can just click fire blast. I can just click scald because he has very few things on his team that want to take them. Um, if Whimsicott is alive, for the most part, we're clicking U-turn just because why let him switch into that for free? Um, Ice Punch is there in order to have a more reliable type coverage against the Whimsicott and the Mega Aerodactyl. Stone Edge is something I can click a lot of the time too. I just don't want to put myself in a position where I have to click Stone Edge. So if I, since I didn't need any other moves besides Close Combat, U-Turn, and Stone Edge, if his Pokemon are at a little bit lower uh, HP, then I can go for Ice Punch, have a little bit more reliable means of one hit KOing something. Um, for example, Mega Aerodactyl takes around 90% from an Ice Punch. Um, so yeah, then I don't have to go for Stone Edge. If he's at full HP, then sure, I'll go for Stone Edge. But why put yourself in the position where you might miss? Well, you can get a guaranteed KO. I like that a lot better. So guys, that's gonna be the team for this week eight battle. Um, definitely hope Liam gets to feeling better in the meantime, but we're definitely going to give his stand-in coach a heck of a time because if Liam thinks he's good enough to be a stand-in, then you have to take that threat very seriously. So thank you so much for watching this team builder and enjoy the battle. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching the team builder, if you did. If you didn't, now it is time for this battle up against the Unlawful Exiles, actually Substitute cho Coaches, uh, Substitute Coaches D-Jar. Um, I'll leave the Substitute Coaches Twitter in the description, and I'll also leave Exiles channel in the description. But anyways, you can see the team that I brought, he actually did not bring exactly what I thought he'd bring. I didn't expect to see the Licky Licky or um, the Whimsicott necessarily, but Infernape, Yuxi, Mamoswine, and Aerodactyl were all very expected. Very nice that I don't have to deal with Kieran Black or the uh, or or the Drapion really because the entry hazards won't necessarily be there that I have to kind of play around. Um, against this team, Blastoise is still a great overall lead. Um, he can lead with Whimsicott and probably soak up a hit if he's bulky, but if he's bulky, he won't do very much damage with his attacks. Uh, another great lead would have been. Uh, my Gardevoir just because he doesn't have anything that wants to take it, but I was very afraid he would lead off with Infernape and Gunk Shot me. So we decided to lead with Blastoise and just Mega Evolve immediately. Now he does decide to lead with his Whimsicott, which I was like, great, I can just go straight for Ice Beam and knock him out if he's bulky. Just a 2 hit KO very easily. Um, and if he attacks me, then I can see what type of uh, Whimsicott he has. He actually goes for Energy Ball over Giga Drain, so we know it's offensive. And he surprises me with the Yachi Berry, which means this is only going to do about half damage to him. Which is pretty unfortunate. Uh, what is even more unfortunate for him is that I get the Freeze here. Uh, which means he's going to swap out. I was very tempted to go for Scald here to try and pick up a burn, but if he stayed in, then I would thaw the Whimsicott. So I decided to swap out as well, go out into my Ferrothorn. Just to try to set up some entry hazards, um, we're just going to exchange Stealth Rocks here in the most complimentary greeting of all time. And uh, I knew Infernape was most likely coming in, thinking that I would keep on, keep on setting up. I had a choice. I could have just kept on going for spikes, but I figured let's put some damage on Infernape uh, just because I don't really have a lot of things that can switch into it. If he's special, if he's physical, great. But uh, here, I kind of need to see what type of Inferno he is. So I go out into Gardevoir, expecting the fighting type move, because I thought he'd expect me to go to Blastoise. But he just goes straight for Fire Blast, which sucks, because Gardevoir takes a ton of damage here. Um, doesn't knock me out, though, because of that HP investment that I put on Gardevoir. And we do see Life Orb on him as well. So he's going to be getting whittled down very quickly, as he's already at half HP. And he's only launched a single attack. Uh, as he goes out into his Licky Licky, I was very pleased to see that. He might have thought that I was Scarfed, uh, which wouldn't have been too out of the question here, just because of how spammable Moonblast is. And I do fantastic damage against Licky Licky, which he switches out again. He might have, <laughs> it's like, okay, what kind of damage was that? That was too much damage against a bulky Licky Licky. Uh, but he brings in Whimsicott just as Death Fodder, which is great because he doesn't get a chance to thaw out while that freeze was pretty unfortunate overall. Um, it worked out well for me. I don't know if it mattered a lot in the end if he was just going to sack it off like that. But he might not have sacked it if uh, he hadn't gotten frozen. 
Now here, I wasn't sure what he would go for. I was worried he would predict my switch out into Ferrothorn and go for Superpower, and he does, but I calced it and I knew I could take several of them, especially after the drops. And seeing that, I was like, oh, he's either sashed or he has some type of item, like uh, maybe a choppleberry. I knew he wasn't banded, of course, not life or because he didn't take any recoil. Uh, but he just stays and goes for superpower again, and I could have killed him. I thought for sure he was switching out right there. Um, that sucked. I sh really, really should have just KO'd him. Um, but since he just stays in, I get up a layer of spikes, and now I have to switch out or I lose my Ferrothorn. Uh, that was a very ballsy play on his part, especially considering last time I just attacked. I did not think he would stay in. Uh, and that was actually a misplay on my part, because if I had just KO'd him, then I would not have had to put my Blast Switch in this position. I could have just uh, brought it in later and spun things away. But surprisingly still, he stays in and goes for a third superpower with minus two attack. I was like, geez, he's just scarfed into superpower here, most likely. And he manages to take out my Blast Switch, surprisingly, after minus three attack so I don't get a chance to rapid spin any ha his hazards away. Uh, I do go out into Volcarona here, make quite a bit of a misplay here. I just, honestly I wasn't in a good headspace for this battle, and I don't battle as well in the morning I guess is if I'm going to make an excuse, but I really should have just gone straight for Giga Drain, and that would have put some substantial damage onto Aerodactyl, it would have knocked out the Bamboo Swine, but for some unearthly reason I try to, Volker I try to uh, set up here knowing that a plus one Psyche doesn't kill him. Uh, if I had Hidden Power Ice, that would have KO'd. But after Stealth Rocks, he's gonna live this pretty comfortably. And he goes for the safe Earthquake instead of Stone Age. So that means my Volcarona goes down for no reason. Uh, it also would have been a much better play to go out into um, my Gardevoir on the uh, locked, he was locked into Superpower. So I could have just gone for a very safe Moon Blast there too. Um, Another misplay, I go out into Weavile here and go for Ice Shard, instead of going out into my um, Primate and clicking Close Combat. That would have baited in the Yuxi instead of baiting in the Infernape, but I can deal with Yuxi and I need to actually get damage onto Yuxi instead of baiting in this Infernape and then having to take another big hit from it. So I end up sacrificing my, my Ferrothorn, hoping that he goes for a contact move, uh, but he actually smartly packs Vacuum Wave so that he doesn't have to touch my Ferrothorn. Uh, he is taking quite a bit of damage getting racked up on him though from entry hazard in his life orb. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Um, going out in the prime up here does very easily signal that I'm scarfed. I make another huge misplay here because I thought he would just uh, sacrifice it and be KO'd. So I didn't really think my playthrough. I should have gone for U-turn on the off chance that his life orb didn't KO him. Um, because then I would have been scarfed in the U-turn, I would have outsped anything, scarf U-turn out, go out into something else. And then, of course, my Gardevoir would have been able to come in um, on the either the double down or me knocking him out with U-turn instead of me having to bring it in and sacrifice it like this. Because uh, I would have been able to get some solid damage off onto Yuxi, which would have been very, very nice. But I did not think that played through. Uh, there were just two very big misplays in this battle. Uh, that I really didn't have a good reason for doing. Now I do go into Weavile now, and I was like, should I go for knockoff or should I go for Icicle Crash? Because I know he has Colber Berry. I decided to go for a knockoff on the off chance that I get a crit, and I was afraid to miss Icicle Crash because then I wouldn't get any damage off. Um, and he's gonna knock out Weavile with a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, depending on his investment, around 50 HP Weavile, uh, it, it had a chance to live if he's like a um, minus special attack bill trying to get very, very bulky. I very doubt that that was the case, but Weavile's special defense is nothing to sneeze at. Now here I have to go for Stone Edge, just because I need to hit the rest of his team, but that's going to be a good game, because even if I hit the Mammoth Swine, I wouldn't be able to KO it from that range. So we end up losing against Djar or the Unlawful Exiles. Uh, standing Coach, very, very good choice in the Standing Coach, I must say. Thank you very much for the battle. And that's actually going to put the Eternity Enders at our third overall loss for the season which is disheartening but we have three games left in the season we're doing amazingly better than we have been in the previous seasons uh and that is of substantial note now thank you guys so much for watching in future battles you can expect me to not make mistakes like i did in this battle um if i had just saved volcarona 
that would have put me in a position to sweep later on against the Yuxi. And um, if I had gone for the U-turn, then I probably could have gotten off substantial damage against the Yuxi and then brought in Weavile. And then his Cold Barbarian might not have battered as much because he would have been in a position where he might have needed to switch out into Mammoth Swine and take a hit. So either one of those plays would have been more, uh, more optimal. Now for next week, we are going up against the Baron Munich, who are coached by Shadi. That is going to be the week nine battle coming into the top three or final three battles here. And I'm not out of running for the championship runner up. I, this loss is probably going to push me out of third place, which is where I am right now overall, especially if George wins his battle. But that is not terrible because we can definitely bounce back. And again, remember my goal at the beginning of the season was not to have runner up. It was not to have, oh, I want to do better than last season. We wanted to get that championship slot. So depending on how everyone else does, we can still pull this back. And thank you guys for watching. Tune in next week for another fantastic Pokemon Premier League battle. I'll see you later.